Thank you. So now we're going to hear from Jesse about education and knowledge transfer through music. Jesse Wright is a singer songwriter, a fiddler, violinist, and music educator at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart here in Alice Springs. She hails from Armandale, New South Wales, and now resides here as a music teacher and regularly performs around the town and the Northern Territory. Jessie studied music education and violin at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, where she developed her passion for songwriting. In 2020, Jessie received an Australia Day Award with the National Council of Women, New South Wales, recognising her to be a future leader in her field, encompassing all things music education and performing. While new to recording her own track, Jessie is a prolific performer. We've been privileged this week to hear her sing and play, and she's a multi-instrumentalist. Whether she's playing with local chamber music ensembles or rocking it out at an open mic, playing uh, rock and folk bangers, Jenny's per performance, <laughs> Jessie's performances are captivating. In October 2022, Jessie will be performing as the concertmaster for the world premiere of Anne Boyd's Olive Pink Opera. She'll also be the children's choir director for the Gap Kids Chorus, who are members of her school choir, the Traeger Choir, who we've heard here this morning. Jessie hopes to begin touring her own music in 2023 and continue songwriting, violining, and inspiring the next generation of musicians through music education. And we've already seen a fantastic example of that this morning. So thanks very much, Jessie. Hi, everyone. Yes, with my blank sheet. Um, I've actually never given a presentation before like this, so first time I'm using one of these. Um, I guess that's next. And I actually want to show you, before I start, um, this is a fantastic clip of Bobby McFerrin, and um, I'm not even going to say anything more. I just want you to watch this. Talking about expectations. Expectations. What? Bye. Okay. <laughs> to me about that is regardless of where I am anywhere every audience gets that but it doesn't matter you know it's just you know the pentatonic scale for some reason if you're looking for a job in neuroscience I think <laughs> um so 
I was shown this at university a couple of years ago and um, it really had a big impact on my belief as a music educator that everyone can sing and it was actually part of one of my um, my final research action um, that I did in 2018 and I looked into students' attitudes towards singing in the classroom and um, this is something that I really, I'll talk more about um, a little bit later, but I really believe that everyone can sing and the power of song is so special and um, just that example of Bobby McFerrin getting up in front of a whole crowd of people, didn't even tell them what to do, like didn't tell them what he was going to do, he just did it and they just followed. So, um, yeah, I just want you to keep that little video in your brain. Um, okay, next. Oh, no. Uh, so, a little bit about me. Uh, yes, so I'm from Armidale, New South Wales. I started playing violin when I was um, four years old and I guess that's where my love of music started. I was very fortunate to be very heavily involved in music um, at school, but mum and dad, who are here today, hey mum and dad, <laughs> um, they also like ensured that I was able to have a balance. So I didn't just do music. I wasn't a crazy nerdy music girl. I also did sport. I focused on my academics. I was also involved in the performing arts and drama. And um, when I was in year 12, I actually was the, I played Eponine in Les Miserables, which was a, a moment in time for me, which I was like, okay, I think singing is something that I really want to try and focus on a bit more when I leave school. Um, and this photo, myself and one of my best mates, Eliza Scott, who is a brilliant violinist and now music educator as well back in Armidale. Um, you can see the lady in the middle is Digi Rickards. So Traeger people, this lady is the reason why I have become a music educator. And it took one person to inspire me, to push me, to challenge me, to um, she was fierce and she terrified me. Sometimes if I was late to rehearsals, I'd get in lots of trouble. So I never was late. Um, and I'm sure that many of you can think about one teacher or one significant adult in your life when you were a child who had made a big impact on you. Um, so I just wanted to put this photo up here because she's sort of the, the start of my music education journey. And when I lived in England um, coaching sport in 2013, working in a school, sorry, 2014, um, she was over there. She met me and we were in Scotland and she just sat down in a cafe with me and said, I think you'd be a great music educator one day. And that was a moment for me on my gap year. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but that was a moment for me where I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to do it. And um, look where I am now, <laughs> teaching the future. Um, so yes, that's a little bit about where I'm from and why music. I just wanted to talk about what brought me to Mbantua, Alice Springs. Um, when I was in my final year of university, I had a lecturer, Kathy Marsh, who's done a lot of research in children's music and play in the playground, particularly in primary schools. And she'd done a lot of research in Tennant Creek. And the research that she shared with us was um, so special and really made an impact on me. And so it was... Um, not only Kathy, but also a subject that I studied, which was Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander music. And I expressed this at a school PD that we had on rec reconciliation the other day that I, in that moment of being introduced to this subject, made a commitment in my brain to be like, I really want to ensure that I bring First Nations artists into the classroom, teach it sensitively, because I know from my experience as a student, my music teachers weren't that comfortable teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander music in the classroom and probably my initial um, understandings of that music would have been very traditional Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander music but we've been studying electric fields and we've been studying um, what well, we just had Malia Choir come in and visit us from Cairns who performed as part of the Desert Song Festival they ran a workshop at school on Wednesday and so it's about um, actually bringing those people into the classroom and acknowledging that there is, yes, there is traditional music um, that we can study. And that's still really important because that is the first birthplace of, you know, First Nations music. Um, it's they're one of our oldest cultures and um, music is such a big part of First Nations people's culture. Um, so I, yeah, I developed this interest when I was at university and I walked up to Kathy Marsh in, on the conservatorium one day and said, Kathy, I want to go to Central Australia. How do I get there? 
And she said, put it in an email. I'll send it to my colleagues. And um, within an hour, we had a response from linguist Miffany Turpin. I don't know if any of you know Dr. Miffany Turpin. She's a really, really um, incredible, incredible person. I'm so fortunate to have connected with Miff. This is Miff and I at the Alice Springs sign um, on the north side of town. We, I said, Miff, we better jump out and take a photo here. I bet you've never taken a photo there before, which was true. And um, this was returning from a bush trip that we did up at Tara um, on Neutral Junction Station. It's a Kadich community, 300 kilometres north of Alice Springs. And this was my first experience going up bush and it was very significant for me and another moment in time for me to be like, I want to come back to Central Australia, whenever that may be. Um, I also connected with musicians in town. You can see the chaos of this place called The Hive, um, people from all over the world, people from all over Australia coming together, playing music, don't even have to speak the same language. And it's been happening this week as well um, as part of Desert Song Festival, jamming with people who... Um, haven't had a similar upbringing to me and I haven't had a similar upbringing to them, but um, the power of music and being able to connect with each other and speak that language has been so significant. So um, if you're visiting Alice Springs, I'm sure you've already had an insight into the music scene here, but um, that's another thing that holds me here in Alice is the music scene and the support that I have. And it's a very different experience to what I experienced when I lived in Sydney Um you know, it's quite fierce there. People want to strip you down and think that they're better than you, and um, which is probably true. You know, they, people are better than you, but um, the way that they went about it really affected me. And I was able to come out to Alice and be uplifted and encouraged, and I still am experiencing that today from the music community. So we are very privileged to live here, and um, and I feel excited that our young people live here too and trying to get them to experience those opportunities as well and let them know that it is out there. <laughs> um, so I actually had a um, bit of a traumatic experience as my f in my first teaching job. I'm just going to see. Oh, yeah. I'll put that up. Um, my first teaching job, I was only there for five months. I thought it was my dream job in country New South Wales. And I lost all my teaching confidence. I had a, um, a moment where I was burnt out and it seemed only natural to book a one-way ticket to Alice Springs. I packed one bag. I had no job, nothing. The music again built me up and um, I was able to get my confidence back. And I actually, there was a job that came up that was advertised at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. And I just was like, okay, I'll give it a go and got the job. And I'm still music teaching there today. And um, it is an incredibly special school. I've taught at schools, Newtown Performing Arts in Sydney. I've taught at the first primary school there, Plunkett Street Primary in the Housing Commission in Woolloomooloo. I've taught at Trinity Grammar Boys Private School in Sydney. So I've had a couple of different experiences in, and also my knowledge of, you know, regional New South Wales and schools there. And um, I have to say that Olsh is an incredibly special school and, um, I don't ever want to leave it, but the, these students are so special and um, they definitely are keeping me there and my wonderful colleagues as well. Really lucky to have some great colleagues around who support what I do in music. Um, really, really supportive school. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about my pedagogy as a music educator. Um, this is all sort of stuff that it was forming, I guess, from when I started playing violin and when I was exposed to those amazing music educators um, that I have been exposed to, to provide an equal opportunity for all students to unleash their passion and interest in music. And um, I'm sure if you speak to any of these choir students, I know that all of these people sitting in front of me, young people, are passionate about music and, you know, they volunteer to come to choir on a Thursday afternoon that's not a chore. It's not something that's expected of them. They do it because they love it and we have a lot of fun together. So, um, but it's not just the choir students. I actually really enjoy working with students who don't believe that they like music. Um, I find that a really actually extra challenge and I'm on a mission to make everyone love music. <laughs> um, but yeah, particularly I've experienced young boys uh, with their voices changing and having conversations in the classroom around why it's uncomfortable singing in front of their peers. Why is it uncomfortable 
singing. It's particularly uncomfortable for boys to sing in front of boys. And we've talked about their voices breaking and, but that's also a thing that happens for young women as well. Um, so yeah, we have, I, I guess I'm trying to provide a, a or create a safe space in the environment, in the classroom, an environment where young people can feel heard, know that their interests, their musical interests are respected and known and a non-judgmental space. I love that all these kids are just doodling on their beautiful notepads that they got gifted this morning. I don't know if this is going in your ears, but I'm trying to inspire you here. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, I guess, follows on to my next point, instill a confidence in my students' own voices, singing and vocalising their, didn't finish that, um, opinions about music. And something that uh, was I was really lucky to learn at university is a love of all music, no matter the culture, no matter the genre, um, just have an open mind to listening to other people's music and sharing. Um, I did make a point on this before. I, I have made a commitment to reconciliation through music education and um, that is something that I probably majority of my music actually is Australian music, but particularly music from our First Nations people. We just uh, had a experience my year six students hand up if you're in year six these students sang Paul Kelly's from little things big things grow a couple of weeks ago for our college concert and the ABC came in and filmed us and the other special thing about it was that it was actually an electric fields version in Pittenjar and so the students learnt the Pittenjar lyrics via the way that I teach which is sort of through um, not call and response, but like an echo. I get them to echo me. Maybe I should do a little, I don't know how much time I've got. Um, but yeah, that they learnt just through hearing and we were, Electric Fields did send us the lyrics in Pit and Jar as well. Um, so they sang very confidently and knew the lyrics very well for From Little Things, Big Things Grow. And that's one way that I feel like I can contribute and sharing. It's not my language. Um, it's not my culture, but I try as much as I can to, um, I guess, instill that on the young people. Um, yeah. And I think something really important to keep in mind as a human being is to continue to learn, make a commitment to continue to learn. And sometimes we have to unlearn things that we grew up thinking were okay or, um, thinking we're okay. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm always learning every day, every time I'm connecting with new musicians, we've just been connecting with Jill, Julian Belbashir, Moroccan Australian. Um, we've been, we've heard his instruments recently. Can you put down that paper, please? It's very distracting. Um, and also Bassity from, um, West Africa as well. So it's been really special. Um, Just, I've, I know I've touched on a couple of these things. So as I mentioned before, we we had Paul Kelly come in and sing. He also sang from Little Things, Big Things Grow with the students. He said, can I do my version? Because he'd seen the video of the students doing the Pit and Jar version, the Electric Fields version. And absolutely, we were, we were like, yes, you can, Paul. You can do that. <laughs> um, that beautiful song that he wrote with Uncle Kev Carmody. And we unpacked, that's one way that I guess that, that's this whole thing that I'm, I'm trying to make the point of today is how I bring um, land and climate into the classroom and all these students in front of you today know the story of the Wave Hill walk-off. I didn't really, I can't say I learned that story at school. I didn't know about it, but these students know through music and through unpacking the lyrics and we've had conversations about it and we've had conversations about how what Lord Vesey did to Lingari, Lingari and um, the Gurindji people was not right. Um, so power of music, hey? Um, we had Malia come in on Wednesday and sing some traditional Torres Strait Islander songs. A lot of these lovely young women are um, have Torres Strait Islander heritage and they they were on the floor, they sat down and I actually wasn't there when they taught the students, but they taught the students the movements. And the other day I went into the primary school, the year four campus and straight away, the first thing they did was, what was it? What did they do? Huh? 
Yeah, can you show me? What do they do? Anyway, they're shy now. <laughs> um, but the movement was really, really fantastic. Um, and the kids knew that straight up. And that was another way that we could bring that into the classroom. Um, I have this video of PK speaking about his songwriting process, but I'm actually not going to play it because I don't have much time left. Um, and Gypsy and, no, Warina and Valerie spoke about that very beautifully. So moving right along. Um, look, there's PK with our choir, one big happy family. The old choir here on the on the right. We went out and filmed Sleep Australia Sleep a couple of years ago, which you can find online. Um, and as soon as Paul and his team and Sean saw the video, they were just jumped at it and they said, we'd love to share this with our fans and our community. So um, I guess in moving forward, like I mentioned before, I have made a commitment to continue to learn. I'm remaining open-minded. I want to provide opportunities for these young people to do things like this so special that they are able to be here today. I've never done anything like this. Um, but also songwriting is a platform that I create for my students, particularly in year seven and eight in term four, the students um, are able to write songs and share their voices and their opinions. And I did have a student a couple of years ago who wrote about climate change and, um, and he was just like, miss, all these old people, they're just leaving us with all these problems and I feel really scared about it and I don't know what to do. And it was a quite emotional song. Um, so continue to learn, continue to inspire. Music is a fantastic platform for us to engage with others and is it a universal language. And just really quickly, I thought I might finish on a song if I can do that. Maybe it's appropriate to sing the first song that I ever wrote, Home.
Thank you. Thank you so much to Anne-Marie for inviting us along and thanks Desert Song Festival for having us.